Good morning to all of you. We will have a session on medical insurance. This is, in fact, was introduced sometime in 1986 by the General Insurance Corporation and its subsidiaries. The idea was to promote something similar to the insurances health cover that we had in the West. But there were certain initial problems at the time of introduction of this policy coverage because we never had a network of hospitals. First of all, we never had any private hospitals other than government hospitals in those days. Very few were there. They were there, but then not like the one that you find it today. And the government hospitals, they took care of most of the load of the problems of the people. And people were probably not aware of some of the diseases. Today people are aware that certain things can be cured if you take a treatment at the appropriate time. So from 1986 onwards, 1986 to till date, roughly about 20 years period, this health insurance has come a very long way. Today, mediclaim is most sought after by all individuals of all age groups. Even though people have not understood the mediclaim policy very clearly. See, mediclaim insurance also is part of any other insurance that the insurance company gives. One thing has to be understood, this is not for charity. For example, what common mistake that people do is, when the doctor says you have got a disease, you have got a problem, and when he finds that the bill is too heavy to lift, immediately runs for insurance cover and then goes to the insurance company and says, I want medical insurance. But the insurance company says, sorry, we will give you insurance cover, but except for that particular disease for which you have been looking for treatment, that will not be covered. Because we do not cover what is called pre-existing disease. And we do not have what is called a maintenance contract. This policy is only for those people who have been continuously paying the premium for many years, even when they were healthy. And in times of need, suddenly something comes uh, happens to you and then you can take advantage of this policy. So medical insurance, today it is, we have got one of the best uh, well-developed network of hospitals. All big insurance companies boast of even all over India about 2,000 to 3,000 hospitals in their network. And for this network, they don't do it directly. We have one important uh, intermediary called third-party administrator. Before uh, we discuss the medical policies, I would like to expand on how the entire thing works. We, this intermediary called the third party administrators, they are the ones who maintain license with the nursing homes and hospitals. They go to a hospital, they say, if my member comes to you with a card, or what you have to do is you should not take money from it. This is called cashless scheme. Supposing he has some insured of 1 lakh rupees only, the ailment demands that he needs to spend 2 lakhs. His coverage of only 1 lakh, but the problem, the disease or whatever the malady demands 2 lakhs. At least up to 1 lakh, the hospital will not charge for him. Only the balance will be paid from this pocket. Many questions uh, come to people's mind. This cashless is, can it really work? And many questions have been asked why the hospitals are unnecessarily asking for so many diagnostic reports when the disease or ailment is very simple. Or any treatment which requires only one week or so, why the hospitals are keeping the person for two weeks, thereby inflating the expenditure. These are matters discussed uh, by various agencies, including insurance companies. So, they have standardized the treatment, they have standardized the expenditure. In fact, there is a proposal to come up with a standardized package for even coconuts, uh, bypass, or whatever it is. So, initially, the intention to have a good network of hospitals and also the insurance coverage, the pitfalls were there, but by and by, people are identifying the weaknesses of the system and then making the necessary corrective measures. 
Today, in fact, I would even ideally suggest, when if you want to uh, make a good present to a married couple or anybody at a particular time, or your son or your daughter or somebody, present them with a medical policy, medical insurance policy. Because it will start a habit. After the policy expires, they will continue to have the policy because these have to be started at a very young age itself. And people should get used to the idea of having, like you are having a, a credit card, you are having a, so many other things, a driving license. This is a very simple protection. Basically, just imagine the cost of a bypass comes to about a lakh and a half. If you don't have it, and the premium, surprisingly, some of the insurance companies can go as low as even 1000 rupees. A classic medical claim policy costs you about 1220 plus service tax in the age group of up to 35 years, but some insure. So, imagine where is 1000 rupees for an individual person and where is a bill of 1.5 lakhs. And this 1.5 lakhs will only go up, it will not come down. However, you standardize, how much, however much you standardize the package. Basically, it's a question of uh, enlisting a large population into the medical insurance scheme. Then, automatically, the premiums will also come down. Then, the treatment will get standardized. People will get the desired benefit. Today, it does not happen. In fact, all insurance companies are canvassing for a good population of med medical policies or health policies, whatever you call Now, let us specifically deal with what is a medical claim policy originally when it was started? When it was started, it had uh, some insured, but then during those days, it had sublimits also for room expenses, for uh, surgeon uh, fees, for anesthesia, for nurses' fees, everything. Today, that sublimits are disappeared. If I have one lakh rupees, I can apply it to any expenses for medical treatment. It could be the room rent, it could be the doctor's fees, it could be anesthetic's fees, whatever it is, surgeon's fees, whatever it is. But basically these cover, uh, medical claim covers the following uh, expenses. For example, room, boarding expenses in the hospital, nursing home, whether it's a hospital or a nursing home. Nursing expenses, surgeon, anesthesia, medical practitioner, consultants, specialist fees. We have anesthesia as a special expense, blood, oxygen, operation theater. Surgical appliances, medicines and drugs. These are all examples. Basically, this is what uh, the entire medical claim policy covers. Not only that, in case of a serious treatment, it also covers the expenses you have incurred 30 days prior to your admission to the hospital. And also 60 days after you have been discharged from the hospital. Okay. Now, what is a hospital or a nursing home? The main issue is this. Can uh, or a doctor running a dispensary, can he call it a hospital or a nursing home? Can he raise a bill? It says no. Uh, it has to be registered either as a hospital or nursing home with the local authorities and is under the supervision of a registered qualified medical practitioner. Or it should have at least the following uh, criteria in intercom. One, it should have at least 15 inpatient beds. Or it could be even 10 beds in case, in case of uh, Class C towns. A fully equipped operation theatre. A fully qualified nursing staff. These are the criteria. These, these are the criteria for calling it a hospital or a nursing home. And uh, one thing is sure, you will have to have an admission of at least 24 hours in the hospital. Though of course for certain treatment this has been uh, relaxed. For example, technology has advanced so much. If you have, a, let us say, a stone in your kidney and it doesn't require any serious operation, you don't have to have any lithotropy or lithotropy, I don't know how to pronounce it. What they use is a laser technology. They focus the laser, laser on the stone and then they break it. So it gets secreted through the urine itself. And this may not require so much of uh, admission. The patient is discharged on the same day. The same applies to some of the eye treatment. You know, they use a laser technology for uh, correcting the, what is called the uh, retina or cornea or do any, any other things. They are uh, done in a very, very, very precise way.
without uh, using the uh, knife and scalpel or whatever it is. Now, this also covers basically domiciliary hospitalization. What is domiciliary hospitalization? A domiciliary treatment is separate. So, domiciliary treatment means what is normally called going to the doctor for your cough, cold, flu, or P U O. That is pyrexia of unknown origin. Doctor generally says so. Viral fever is called P U O. So, these are the things which are not visualized under medical and policies. Domiciliary treatment is not. You go to the doctor, take a prescription, buy the medicine, go to office. There is no element of hospitalization involved. But domiciliary hospitalization means uh, medical treatment for a period exceeding uh, three days for uh, certain illness, disease, which in the normal course uh, would require care and treatment at the hospital or nursing home. Okay, but actually taken whilst confined at home in India, of course, under certain circumstances. What are the circumstances? The condition of the patient is that he cannot be removed to the hospital. The patient cannot be removed to the hospital because for lack of accommodation in the hospital itself. So these are the conditions under which a person can take treatment in the house itself, treating the house as a hospital. An ideal case is for example a fracture. Once you go to the hospital, get yourself admitted and then come back home and then you take the necessary treatment or for that matter typhoid. You don't uh, get yourself admitted into hospital for treatment. Some of the diseases, they don't require hospitalization, but all the same they are covered under the policy. Then uh, we'll have to see what are the exclusions under this policy, which is very important. Uh, normally people uh, under the under impression that everything is covered in policy. But uh, it, this has, like any other insurance policy, clear-cut exclusions. One of them is, all diseases, injuries, which are pre-existing at the time of taking the policy for the first time. A clear-cut case is, for example, I already have heart problem. So, heart diseases are not covered. I already have a kidney problem. So, this is excluded from the scope of the policy. That means if I develop any condition because of this kidney or heart, then I don't have a remedy vis-a-vis this policy. Only that particular pre-existing disease stands excluded. Yes. Rest of the things are covered. If I have a kidney problem or heart problem, but if I have a hemorrhage or something, or if I have a, let's say, accident or something, they are covered under the policy. Okay. So the idea is people who already have a problem should not be allowed to misuse the purpose of the insurance. The purpose of the insurance should be that, you know, it should not be known to anybody that it's a bad apple. I should have a collection of uh, one lakh apples, suddenly which goes bad, only for that I am going to give compensation. That is called selection of risk. So I should not go for a very bad risk and then reward it. After all, this is a money collected from so many people. What is insurance? Nobody is paying from their pocket. Under medical insurance, I cover from one lakh people I, or supposed to be healthy people as far as I am concerned. Or other five people fall sick. So I pay towards their expenses. That's what insurance is all about. If I start treating only the people who already have sickness, then why would those people pay? People who are healthy. Mm -hmm. So that is the principle behind it. Secondly, any disease contracted by the insured person during the first 30 days of the policy, they are also not covered. But there are certain exceptions to this because uh, if the medical uh, practitioner feels or the insurance company knows that these things were not known to the insurer at the time of taking the policy. Right. And of course, in case you already have an insurance policy earlier with some other insurance company, you are merely shifting it to another company without any break in insurance. Then also this application, this provision will not apply because you already have a 12 month coverage earlier from let us say from X company or going to Y company, there this provision will not apply. A third such exclusion is the first year of 
accepting their policy. Some of the treatments are not covered. For example, cataract is one. A benign uh, prostatic uh, hyperthropy, hysterectomy, or uh, mineralogia. Uh, they are, these medical terminologies are very difficult to pronounce. But there are certain uh, instances, these are not covered in the first year of operation. Operation means first year of acceptance of running of the policy, currency of the policy. But from sub subsequent year onwards, they are also covered. So alternatively, if a person has taken a cover with some other company and he is shifting the insurance company, then we should we can say with confidence that these are covered in the renewal also. Then uh, we have uh, the intention is not to cover the cost of spectacles. Basically, the principle is no beautification is covered under the policy. For the same reason, no date filling as a tool, they are also not covered. Unless they are part of an accident, you lost all your tooth no? because of an accident, then it makes sense. In the normal course, I am having some root canal problem or any other issue connected with this. Or basically, I want to correct my teeth. So they are all not covered under the policy. And uh, general liberty, convalescence, these are all, uh, for that you go to a hospital for taking rest, they are all not visualized under this policy. AIDS again is not covered under the policy. This policy does not cover natural procedures. Now let us talk about the age limit. What is the age up to which uh, people can be given or from which age? Originally it was visualized from age 5 to age 80. But today we have crossed that stage. In fact, many insurance companies are willing to give cover from 30 days of the birth of the child. Okay. So that is possible. This policy also enjoys certain family discount. For example, uh, husband and wife, say spouse and wife, or man and wife, we call it. Then two children. Up to that, you get a 10% discount in the total premium. The premium is calculated on the basis of the age. This is uh, not a policy where across the board the same premium for everybody. It is a function of age and also the sum insured. Higher the sum insured, higher the premium. Higher the age, again higher the premium. And after certain age, uh, medical certificate is very much required. For example, most of the companies insist on uh, medical certificate after the age of 45. Then comes uh, cumulative bonus, like we had discussed during the personal accident cover. This policy also, if there is no claim in the previous year, you get a 5% of the sum insured COSA. And again, this can be protected up to 50%. Rather, 10 years it can be allowed. And it reaches a maximum of 150. So again, this is a one year contract. People have a right to change the insurance company and then they can. New covers are coming. In fact, one of the life insurance companies, I don't want to name them, they have come with a 20 year contract for health insurance, which is something very uh, good. Uh, because there is a problem in the one-year contract, if you have got a treatment or if you have taken a claim this year, the insurance company next year may <laughs> refuse to renew. Whereas in a 20-year contract, the contract is already there. If I go to the hospital this year and after five years again I go to the hospital, there is no issue. It has got yearly limits and it has got overall policy limits. And it is uh, not even uh, reimbursement. It is a function of number of days you are there. Straight away they pay you a lump sum. Whereas in mediclaim policies, it is actual reimbursement. No profit, no gain. Not only that, this particular uh, company says, we will anyway give you money, whether you have mediclaim policy or not. You prefer a free treatment from mediclaim policy. But if you have our policy also concurrently, we will make lump sum payment to you. If only you give us the proof that you have been inside the hospital for 10 days, number of days you have stayed in the hospital into say 500 rupees or 1000 rupees per day, we will pay you. And for surgery, what is the type of surgery you tell me? If it is, we have categorized all the surgeries, this particular surgery, we will pay you this much of money. So this is a new concept that is floating in the market in medical insurance. A classic claim policy was originally visualized with a medical health checkup also. So once in four years, up to 1% of the sum insured, you can 
use it for your health checkup. For example, a person has been having a some injury of let's say one lakh. After every four years, he can spend thousand rupees on health checkup and get reimbursement from the insurance company. Basically, this operates as a input for the insurance company for being prepared next year, and it encourages people to have what is called health awareness. And these days, we have to discuss one particular type of policy, which is what is called a floater policy. There is always a demand. You look at the scenario. Normally, much of my experience, what happens is husband wife. Two children. Two children are, let's say, ten years and five years. Husband is, uh, let us say, thirty-five, and wife is thirty. What happens is uh, the husband takes a high sum insurance, four lakhs. Wife takes three lakhs, and when it comes to children, one lakh, one lakh. And for, let us, uh, God forbid, if something happens to the children, which requires, let's say, three lakh rupee treatment, they cannot take from the husbands or fathers. Because they have been individually fixed as uh, somebody getting four lakhs, somebody getting three lakhs, and children getting only one lakh or even fifty thousand. You can say cumulatively four plus three plus one plus one comes to nine lakhs, but when it comes to the admission, there is a supplement for each person. Ideally, what I would say is, look, in any one year, not all of us are going to land in the hospital, and for any one treatment, no treatment is costing more than four lakhs. So I would like to take a policy of five lakhs, but it should operate for either of us, say husband and wife, two children. All of us stand covered cumulatively for a sum insured of five lakhs. Either my child also will be able to use it, I will also be able to use it. But in a year, the upper limit cannot be reached. That is five lakhs is enough. So these floater policies are normally given to the corporates. Corporates means many big companies. They want to give welfare benefit. They tell the employees not only you are covered, your family is also covered. But not the dependent parents, dependent spouse, and uh, dependent children. And when they do it, they take the premium for the uh, oldest person as one unit. Let us say uh, the husband's by uh, the, the husband's age is let's say thirty thirty four. And uh, for one lakh, it comes to let us say thirteen hundred as the premium. And for rest of the family members, they take only twenty percent of the premium, or even less. So in reality, what would have been uh, let's say thirteen hundred into four, five thousand two hundred. Now it becomes twenty percent one point six. One point six of point uh, six of thirteen hundred is how much? Seven hundred and eighty rupees. Okay. So 1300 plus in a in an amount of 2000 plus, you are covering the entire family for a sum insured of one lakh. Okay. So either or situation comes. What is good for one lakh is also good for five lakhs. Mm -hmm. But only thing is, the original premium will be on the basis of the oldest person in the unit. Then comes maternity cover. Normally maternity is not visualized as. Uh, To be given to individuals or uh, even families, it is given in a large group like big corporates. But they put this exclusion that first nine months of this cover, whoever uh, wants to avail of the maternity benefit, first nine months it will not apply. That means anybody who is entering the scheme already pregnant, for them it is not covered. But if they become pregnant after the scheme has started, which means nine months is the Gestation period, they will be covered. Every every insurance company has got its own uh, its own uh, methodology of doing it, and there is a discount for uh, removing this domiciliary hospitalization also. Supposing some company says we don't want, we already have give a benefit to the employees. If somebody is in the hospital, in the house itself taking treatment, that money is not much. We will pay it anyway. So we want to delete. There is domiciliary hospitalization, so there is a certain amount of discount. And in a group, again, the corporates are demanding pre-existing diseases should be waived. There should not be any condition. If in a group, I cannot say that who is having this disease. I am offering you at least thousand people for insurance. There, I cannot be going and you cannot tamper, uh, you cannot meddle with our employees. Uh, 
work for you. So if somebody is under, he is under, that's all. But we, I am also offering a person who is healthy. So we want to bail that pre-existing diseases. If somebody has a certain problem, so be it. Our intention is not to take advantage for only that individual. You get my point? So it is not knowing full well that somebody has got a problem, you don't offer thousand people for insurance. If you want to attack that issue, you can pay it anyway very well without the medical and policy, you can compensate it. But you are also offering healthy individuals for insurance. In that scenario, this logic applies and it, it holds good. Similarly, the first 30 days uh, saying we will not pay anything happening, that also is not applicable. They asked for a waiver of the first year of uh, diseases that we will not pay. Certain diseases I told you, like cataract, benign, this, that, etc. That also, they are asking for a waiver. So, in a situation of corporate uh, GMC, what is called group medical policy, many benefits are there. But nowadays, some other public sector and private sector companies have come up with a floater policy for families also. This is something very new. I would not like to name the uh, insurance companies, but this trend is picking up with other insurance companies also. The amount is also very little and uh, like any other uh, group insurance, this also has certain discounts. If the group is very large, then certain discounts are offered. And uh, this is a non-direct policy, that means whatever be the rates, the insurance companies are not answerable to tariff advisory committee. It is negotiable. In case of bad claim ratio, for example, I have collected a premium of let's say 5 lakhs and the claims have come to 10 lakhs, then I have every right to increase the premium next year. This is called loading. In case the claims are far, far lower, 20% or less, then I should give a discount to the entire corporate, which I is asking for it. This Mediclaim is a very important uh, insurance and uh, if this develops and at least if 10 to 20 percent of the population in India are covered under health insurance, it will be a very excellent thing. It will develop excellent network of uh, hospitals, good standardized procedure for uh, treatment and uh, health awareness of many insurance. With this, uh, I conclude this session of medical insurance. Thank you very much.